Hello guys, this is part 2 of the solution for scene 3 in Factory IO. If you missed the previous video, you can check it out here above. So let's get started with part 2. In the previous video, we write the code for the filling conditions. Today, we're gonna write the code for the discharging conditions. And also, we're gonna write the code to display the time on the display. Please note that the E push button discharge is normally closed, so it's one when it's not pressed and zero when it's pressed. And the timer display is from the type integer. You can see that by going to drivers and holding regis register zero is an integer or a float. So Q timer display expects an integer or a float. So let's go to OpenPLC editor. And you should remember uh, this part of the code. This was for the filling conditions. The only difference between this and the previous video is that the time filling um, is added. Time filling is just a memory or a variable to memorize the time filling. It's from the data type time also. Then we have the discharging conditions. They pretty much the same as the filling conditions but a little bit reverse so you have to press the discharge button please note is a falling trigger and not a rising trigger like the filling conditions this is because the button is normally closed in this case discharging is only eight seconds and we remember the time in the variable time discharging so these are the conditions for discharging then we have to change the time to the data type int so time filling, we have to change it to time filling int. So I made a new variable, time filling int, to save it to an integer. You can find the blocks to convert uh, types here in the library under type conversion. And then you have to scroll from which data type to what data type you want to go. So in this case, it's from time to int. It's over here. I use this block two times. So time filling, we change it over to time filling integer. So it's this variable is an integer. And we do the same for time discharging. Then we are setting the outputs. We start with time filling int to the display, time discharging into the display, filling to the filling light, filling to the filling valve. So these two actuators are uh, one when it's filling. And the same with discharging with the discharging light and the discharging valve. So let's make a program out of it. So generate program for OpenPLC. And we wait a little bit. And we save this as um, scene 3 part 2. Save it. And then gonna run open PLC runtime on our PC. So that's over here. Open PLC runtime. Click on it. Then we go to our web browser and we go to open PLC. I made a shortcut to this address. The password and username are open PLC. And then we can select the program we just write. Choose a file. Um, just have to find it a little bit. Scene 3 part 2. And we upload the program. Upload the program. So have to wait a little bit. And we go to the dashboard. I'm going to start the PLC. So if everything is OK, we're connected with factory I.O. Okay. Go back to factory I.O. Now if you press the fill button, it will fill. For some reason, 
timer display is not showing up. And if you discharge, you will discharge and you will notice the time is counting now. So why is this happening? Why if you press the filling push button, the display is not showing in PLC editor. So here we also will uh, start PLC simulation. And we're gonna mimic the conditions we did in factory IO to see why it's not working. So now we have the simulation, then you have to go to the debug instance. And now we're gonna test it, we're gonna force push button value on true. So the time is running. Here also the time is running. Here also it goes to display, but the display is still zero, a little bit lower. This is because the PLC uh, runs in loops and the code is executed from top to bottom. So I'll do it again. So we can start the timer here and here it will uh, save it in the queue display. But here is the zero, it will override the queue display. So because it's below. If you uh, change this and you set it above time filling in these conditions, the timer will only work uh, when filling and not when discharging. So so that's not good. So let's solve this. We have multiple solutions. One solution is to add them up. So go to the program again. So back to main. And here we can multiply them. Put this a little bit lower. Um, I said multiplying, I, mean, I meant adding them up. So adding and additioning are arithmetic functions. So here we can use add. And we add time filling, time discharging, and then we display it to display and we delete it here and that should be it here like this So we can try if this works. So I'm gonna start the PLC simulation again. To wait to the little man is in run. We're gonna look at the debug instance and we're gonna do the same again. Push through. And you will see the time filling add to a time discharging int but it's zero and it will add up or we can also do just the other way around so here you will see the time will display to the value so to finish up we're gonna download the program to open plc so we generate an open plc program using the arrow wait a little bit for compiling. You just overwrite scene 3 part 2, save it there. You want to replace it? Yes. Then we go back to our web browser and then we go to programs. Um, we just can click our uh, program name. We can uh, update program our file, overwrite and then we upload the program so that it will overwrite the old program.
After it's compiling, we go back to the dashboard and we start the PLC. And then we go to uh, Factory IO. We will test it out. Press fill. It will fill for 8 seconds and display that time. Actuate valve, cube, fill valve. And the light. Push button. And the discharge. Time will also be displayed, the light will lit up, and the discharge valve will be activated. And now, after 8 seconds, it closes. So, this is my solution for Scene 3. If you don't want to miss new content of OpenPLC, please consider subscribing on my channel, and I'll see you guys later.